Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Written by Lucky Old Cat Chapter 354 Hunter and Prey After killing Lone Tyrant, Shur Fong turned to face the remaining Dark Star members behind him. At this point, Shur Fong had thoroughly frightened these players. He only required one strike per person, a hundred strikes to bring about annihilation. In the blink of an eye, hundreds of players had died just like that. Moreover, even their guild leader, Lone Tyrant, could not withstand a single hit before the evil Rakshasa burned him to ash. The remaining Dark Star members felt a chill crawl down their spines when Shurfone glanced at them. Their limbs felt like lead, incomparably heavy. At this moment, none of them had any courage to continue fighting. Meanwhile, many players watching from afar immediately uploaded the videos they had recorded to the official forums, creating a huge sensation. As a result, the name Black Flame became even more popular than before. Run. No one knew who had shouted this single word. However, all of the remaining Dark Star members expressed their unanimous agreement as they scattered and ran in all directions. With hundreds of players running away from him in all directions, even Shurfong, as fast as he was, could not possibly kill all of them. Hence, Sher Fong decided to target the nine assassins and rangers who were being protected by a group of their companions. These players bore the dropped items from the mechanical slayer. Sher Fong might be able to ignore killing everyone else, but he could not ignore these nine. Damn, why is my luck so rotten? One of the escaping assassins paled with fright when he saw Sher Fong dart towards his group. Seeing his escape was no longer an option, the assassin spun around and prepared for a desperate battle. Face me if you can. However, by the time this assassin turned to face Shurfong, the blazing abyssal blade had already penetrated his chest. The assassin's HP quickly bottomed out, and three items dropped from his lifeless body. Among them, two were items dropped by the mechanical slayer. Shurfong immediately grabbed the loot from the mechanical slayer and tossed them into his bag. He then charged towards his next target. By the time everyone from Darkstar had run out of absolute time's effective radius, Shurfong had killed six people in quick succession, obtaining a total of 15 dropped items. As for the remaining three, they had escaped. Not a bad harvest. Shurfong smiled satisfactorily as he looked at the new additions to his bag. Including these 15 items, he had obtained a total of 52 dropped items. That was practically half of the Mechanical Slayer's drops. Just as Sher Fong prepared to leave, he suddenly discovered the players from other guilds all barreling towards him. Meanwhile, every one of these players wore greedy expressions, and they all thought of Sher Fong as a fat sheep. If Sher Fong had only taken a handful of the loot, they would not have dared strike at Sher Fong even if someone put a gun to their heads. However, the number of dropped items Sher Fong obtained was simply too shocking. Hence, their greed had overtaken their fear. Although the strength Shurfong displayed defied all reason, everyone had the courage to charge at Shurfong because they knew that his explosive strength could only last for a short time. Moreover, large-scale silencing skills like the one Shurfong used would definitely have a very long cooldown. Knowing that the situation had become unfavorable, Shurfong immediately turned and ran. He had only recently used absolute time, so the skill was still on cooldown at that moment. Without the skill, he stood absolutely no chance against thousands of players. Boss Red Feather, Black Flame is trying to flee. It will be difficult to deal with him if we allow him to escape into White River City's safe zone. Should we use that item now? A Cursemancer asked. At this moment, Red Feather carefully considered the situation. Standing by his side, Flourishing Willow said, Big Brother Red, are we really going to make a move against him? Flourishing Willow's words surprised her teammates. Normally, Flourishing Willow was the most bloodthirsty out of any of them. How could her change of heart not surprise them? Willow, I thought you said that you wanted to teach Black Flame a lesson? What's changed? Don't tell me you're afraid. An assassin on the same team joked. Huh? Who's afraid? Are you itching for a beating? Why don't we have a private spar once we return? Flourishing Willow glared at the assassin. Ah, no. I was just joking. You're a great expert who ranks on the experts list. Why would you bully me? 
the assassin hurriedly said, concerned for his safety. Aside from their boss Red Feather, Flourishing Willow was the strongest powerhouse in their team, and nobody dared provoke her. Humph! Flourishing Willow proudly snorted. She then shifted her gaze to Red Feather, whose expression appeared melancholic, wondering what his decision would be. Previously, Sher Fong had meant nothing to her. Even if Sher Feng's past performances were outstanding, at most, he would only shine in White River City. However, things were different now. Now that she had personally witnessed Sher Feng's skilled and rapid movements, Flourishing Willow was sure that his strength would carry him beyond the confines of just a city. It was especially true for that frighteningly accurate swordsmanship of his. In just a few seconds, Sher Fong had brandished his sword over a hundred times. He had even done so while moving at high speeds. It would have been reasonable if Sher Fong had simply killed the players of Dark Star. However, Sher Fong had actually managed to bury his sword in the heart of every player. Even Red Feather could not achieve such a feat in addition to being so highly skilled. Black Flame was also the guild leader of Zero Wing. His status was not low. Even if they discarded all pretenses and killed Black Flame, it would not benefit the Star Alliance. Move out. In the end, Red Feather still made his decision. They had an opportunity of obtaining a large number of fine gold and dark gold items. So what if they had to offend Zero Wing? Moreover, the Star Alliance was a first-rate guild. Even Ouroboros did not dare disrespect them, much less Zero Wing. Okay. The several assassins in the team replied excitedly, each of them promptly retrieving a purple-gold crystal ball from their bag. Activating wind steps and stealth, these assassins swiftly dashed towards Shurfeng. Shurfeng's movement speed was extremely fast, and ordinary players had no chance of catching up to him. Even rangers, assassins, and swordsmen, who all boasted high movement speeds, could not catch up to Shurfeng. Surprisingly, however, the distance between Sher Fong and the players chasing him gradually shortened. Initially, there had been a span of 100 yards between them. Now, there were only 30 yards. If the distance shortened by just another step, the shield warriors and berserkers could use charge to pin down Sher Fong. However, no matter how hard the warriors tried, none of them could reduce this distance of 30 yards any further. It drove them all mad. That sure is a lot of people. Sher Fong turned to look at the crowd chasing him, his lips curling upwards. At this moment, none of the players pursuing Sher Fong had discovered that, instead of moving closer to White River City's safe zone, they were actually moving farther from it. Soon, Sher Fong would reach the entrance of the teleportation hall. Crap, he's trying to escape through the teleportation array. The crowd started growing anxious. If they allowed Sher Fong to teleport from White River City, it would be extremely difficult for them to catch him. Look, there seems to be a group of people coming out from the teleportation hall. Hey, help us stop that person. That person has dark gold ranked treasures on him. Those treasures will fall off his body as long as we kill him. Seeing that the group walking out of the teleportation hall consisted of over a hundred players, the crowd's hopes rekindled. They tried thinking of how they could convince that group of players to hinder Shurfang's escape. As long as those players could pin him down for a moment, they could surround him once more. When the players emerging from the teleportation hall heard these words, they immediately took action. Without hesitation, they blocked off the entrance of the teleportation hall. Seeing this, the crowd celebrated. Wait, why do those people look somewhat familiar? Aren't the two great beauties standing at the front Zero Wings Fire Dance and Aqua Rose? Why would they be here? As the distance between them and the teleportation hall shortened, the crowd could gradually see more details of those hundreds of players. Suddenly, they realized that something was wrong. The gaze Aqua Rose and the others shot them was the same gazes that they had used to look at Shurfong. It was neither a gaze of ridicule or laughter. Rather, it was the predatory gaze a hunter used while watching prey.